Welcome back to Fake Teen TV, speaking to the issues shaping our nation. Well, today we are tackling the issue of foreign interference in Canada's democracy with none other than the Honorable Stockwell Day, former Minister of Public Safety, which oversees the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, also known as CSIS. Well, it comes down to conflict of interest, and we know that Prime Minister Trudeau and the federal government, I think they've set the, the federal liberals have set the record now for the number of times they've either been uh, admonished or in fact found guilty by uh, the conflict of interest commissioner. Justin Trudeau just got the recommendation, got a study saying, um, you know, China influenced in the election. No, not really, not a big deal. Every other agency conceivable is pointing to clear examples where there was interference. Well, the report was done by the former CEO of the Trudeau Foundation. Is China influencing Canada's election outcomes? Well, Global News was the first report that their sources said, and I quote, in January of 2023, Canadian intelligence officials delivered a series of sensitive briefings to warn the Prime Minister and select members of his cabinet that CSIS had evidence China ran a sophisticated operation intended to influence the 2019 vote, unquote. In their investigative journalism, Global also reported that the Prime Minister was actually counseled to revoke the nomination of one of his candidates, MP Han Dong, whom they suspected was being supported by the People's Republic of China's Foreign Interference Network. In response, the Prime Minister actually pushed back, saying CSIS does not have the power to tell a political party who to run as a candidate and who not to. The NDP leader Jagmeet Singh is calling for a public inquiry on the issue. Former CSIS director Richard Fadden revealed that he agrees an inquiry is needed and many MPs are also weighing in publicly including Dr. Leslin Lewis who pointed out in her social media that in 2014 the Pierre Trudeau Foundation received a China-sponsored $1 million donation. 2019 there was China Communist Party interference with our federal election. 2021 elections the Prime Minister refused to listen to CSIS. 2022 China police stations were discovered in Canada. She then went on to say to stop this destruction, Trudeau must resign. So to say things are heating up in Ottawa is likely an understatement at this point. Well, joining us today to give insight into what's happening and why it matters so profoundly to Canadians is none other than the Honourable Stockwell Day. While in office, Mr. Day served as the Federal Minister of Public Safety and worked closely with CSIS during that time. This is a critical conversation for our democracy. Without any further delay, let's get to it. Well, this is a massive conversation for Canadians right now, and I can think of few people in our nation more qualified to speak to this than yourself. The Honourable Stockwell Day, thank you so much for joining us again. Thanks. Good to be with you. Okay, now for our viewers, Stockwell, you know, you were a minister, federal minister of public safety. You worked on a regular basis with CSIS. Can you unpack exactly what's happening with the potential of foreign interference in our democratic process and why this is such a big issue? Well, yeah, that's a great question, a great start. Foreign interference um, is happening, has always been happening, and attempts to do that will continue to happen, and, and it goes on at different levels. Used to, of course, meet with CSIS and, uh, regularly, look at how they do their operations, even get briefings before they would go out on a particular operation, and uh, in that process also meet with other intelligence gathering agencies from around the world. So CSIS, in my view, rates right up there in terms of not just their processes, but their integrity and how they go about their business. And um, I can tell you they are good at intercepting and uh, advising at the right levels when this kind of interference is going on. So uh, China, of course, is a leader probably the world leader in interference at a variety of levels in uh, other nations. and uh, But other countries do it also. China is a leader, and uh, CSIS is a good tracker 
of what goes on in Canada related to Chinese interference. So what you're saying is even during your tenure that this was something that was being flagged, that was being monitored, and that you were aware of at the federal level? Oh, yeah, significantly and all the time. Um, CSIS would uh, give, um, you know, keep, keep me updated, meet with them regularly, all corroborated uh, evidence to that effect. You know, it, it's important, too, Fatine, that people realize that uh, China interferes at a number of levels, even uh, before I was Minister of um, Public Safety and, and Minister of International Trade, even when I was in opposition. For instance, if opposition MPs were indicating they were going to do, let's say, a trade uh, mission to Taiwan, immediately you would be hearing from the Chinese embassy. You would be getting very strong admonitions not to go. They were not shy about it at all. Okay, so this might seem like a bit of an odd question here, but just for the person out there that maybe isn't, you know, doesn't really track with politics and these types of things, first of all, why would China be so interested in influencing Canada, whether it's our democratic structures or, or something, uh, something else? Uh, and why is this such an issue? Well, it's not just Canada, too. Let's keep that in mind. Um, I would say China now, even more the United States, is probably the most influential nation in the world in terms of uh, being able to impose things that it would like to see on other countries. And it happens in a number of different ways. Uh, you're probably familiar with, their viewers may or may not be, uh, the, something called the Confucius Institutes. These were institutes which were established in Canadian and U.S. universities with millions and millions of dollars going to the university if they would establish a Confucius Institute, which sounds benign and it's all for the, you know, promotion of China studies and things like that. But when uh, just a few years ago, as recently as 2018, 2019, when it was re revealed by a number of sources internationally that China was using those in universities to affect the thinking even of, of students, there was, at that time, about 120 of those institutes in the U.S. and quite a few in Canada. They all began to shut down because governments began to say to those universities, primarily it started in the U.S., you won't get uh, government funding in certain areas if you continue to allow China to uh, impose its philosophies. It's one thing to talk and teach about, but imposing it um, in your universities and on your students. And what happened almost overnight uh, was a lot of those institutes closed down including in Canada, though in Canada there's still some that are open, but they just switched names to the, uh, the China International Education um, uh, Foundation. And so they just, they, they spring up right away. And so how do they influence? Well, for instance, they will not allow, it's, it's all been documented, any discussion by students about, uh, let's say, Tiananmen Square or significant um, opposition to government policies in China. It literally will use the, the money to universities to control the debate. And so, and that's, that's just uh, one of a number of ways. China, with their multi, multi-billion dollar uh, export funds, will go into countries that don't have the finances to be able to get ahead. And they'll say, uh, you know, we'll build you a, a, a railway to uh, provide good infrastructure. And, and China builds great railways. And the government will say, because they need the money, they'll say, great, you know, do that. Um, and then they'll say, but we don't have the money. And China will say, well, we're not a problem. We'll lend you the money. And so China, in terms of uh, exporting not just trade, but their own ideologies, is front and center in the world. And they see it as a way to promote what they think is, is uh, you know, the way of life that everybody should be following, which always involves significant central government control wherever they are. And uh, it's it's a real concern when it comes to they are, are suppressing and squashing the human rights of individuals on a number of levels. You know, and I want to dive into that whole thing of social control and imposing ideologies. We're, we're going to get to that. But to the issue at hand with the 2019 and 2021 federal elections, so it seems like they had some interest in getting various members of parliament, some liberals, some conservatives, elected. There may have been some breaching of Election Canada's rules um, in those last two elections. So why why is this such a huge thing right now, and how should Canadians be responding to this information? Well, it comes down to conflict of interest, and we know that Prime Minister Trudeau and the federal government, I think they've set the, the federal liberals have set the record now 
for the number of times they've either been uh, admonished or, in fact, found guilty by uh, the conflict of interest commissioner of severe conflicts of interest. And I, I think they have set the all-time record for that, and they, they don't really like to acknowledge it or respond to it very much. But, for instance, on this question that you've raised, it's, it, it's a great one. The foundation, which is the uh, Pierre Trudeau Foundation, a uh, multi-million dollar foundation, um, that's where uh, Justin Trudeau just got the recommendation, um, got a study saying, um, you know, China influenced in the election. No, not really, not a big deal. Every other agency conceivable is pointing to clear examples where there was interference. Prime Minister saying, no, I got this report and it's good. It's not a problem. Well, the report was done by the former CEO of the Trudeau Foundation, multi-million dollar foundation, gentleman by the name of Mark Rosenberg. And uh, so here he was, he was the former CEO of the foundation, longtime attachment of government. And he comes out with a report saying, no, it's not a big deal. And so the prime minister goes, yeah, see, I got somebody saying it's not a big deal. Everybody else is scratching their head saying it is a big deal. So that's where, and, and as you know, as some uh, news outlets are now reporting with some of the money that was coming into that foundation from Chinese businessmen who were, and we know Chinese businessmen, they're, they're allowed, and women are, are allowed to do certain things using uh, commercial or free enterprise principles, but under the strong rule of thumb of the China government. So it was under that influence that some Chinese businessmen had to cough up some money. In the initial proposal, as it's been pointed out in media, there was supposed to be, if we give that money, there was supposed to be a statue built of Pierre Trudeau and... Uh, Originally, it was conceived side by side with Chairman Mao of, uh, you know, the former uh, communist leader of China who was responsible probably uh, for more millions of deaths uh, within his own country than probably any other leader, well, maybe in history, but certainly in modern history. And media don't like to talk about that, of course, but it's it, as a matter of fact. So th these are just different ways in which you have to wonder um, – are these conflict-free recommendations that the prime minister is getting? And we think what is coming from uh, someone who is the CEO of his own family foundation, there's just a tad of a chance that there's some influence. Much like, I might add, uh, Fatine, the recent ruling uh, from the person who is appointed to head the investigation into the whole trucker convoy situation, you know, most media... CBC, CTV, and others refused to point out that the person who headed that up is actually a, a family relative of the Trudeaus and was a huge, this was, it was a, a judge, a huge supporter of prime ministerial campaigns and fundraising, and he gets to head up what should have been an independent inquiry. Now, I, I don't know all the, you know, the final results and who did what, but again, uh, a major report done by somebody where there's serious conflict, at least the possibility of conflict of interest. That's the problem with the prime minister basing his suppositions that there was no significant influence or it didn't affect elections uh, because the reports he's getting are those of his own choosing. They're very conflicted and they go against even what CSIS and other agencies are saying. There were concerns Chinese government during the election had things done underhandedly. He was bragging. I branded them as racist. And he said, even though they're not, but I branded them as that and I was successful. We love Canada and we want to see it strong for generations to come. That's why we do this show. We can't do it alone. We need your help. Unlike commercial TV, this program is 100% donor funded. If you'd like to see more episodes produced on important issues for our nation, please consider signing up to be a monthly partner or giving a special gift today. Every gift makes a real difference, and all gifts are tax deductible. Together, we can build a better Canada for the future. Visit Fateen.tv or call 1-866-844-0844 to donate today. What I want to do right now, uh, Mr. Day, is I want to actually throw to a clip. This is a member of parliament from the NDP because the opposition parties, they are on this. They are calling for a public inquiry. I'm going to show that clip and then I'd love to hear your response about what you think should be done in order to get to the bottom of all of this. 
Speaking from illegal police stations to election fraud to attempts to spy in our airspace, Canadians are rightly concerned about foreign interference by the Chinese government and others. It's up to this government to defend Canadians from threats to our democracy. And right now, they're letting Canadians down by not following the lead of other nations. We need better contact points for Canadians being threatened and intimidated, more support for our institutions, and greater protections from foreign spies. When will this government stop dragging their feet and take action to protect Canadians from foreign interference and spying? Well, there you have it, NDP. I know Jagmeet Singh also uh, went public saying, hey, we need a public inquiry on this. The Conservatives have been right on top of it. Uh, Is that what's needed, uh, Mr. Day? Yeah, I think what you just saw there, I think she framed the issue very well. She's obviously feeling passionate about it, delivered it well. That's the key question. Why does the Fed, why do the federal levels, why are they so reluctant to get into this issue of the amount of influence China imposes on Canada, not just on business, in our universities. Uh, There are more Chinese spies in Canada than any other country has spies. Uh, Every country, you know, has its own ways to keep track of things. But it's very aggressive. Uh, We know that there was interference in the 2021 uh, elections, for sure. And the Liberals have always, ever since Pierre Trudeau, been very reluctant to pursue it. Jean Chrétien was the same, very reluctant to say anything at all that might uh, upset Chinese leaders. And uh, that's a real concern. Okay, so allegedly there's one candidate in Toronto that uh, Justin Trudeau or some of his senior team were uh, tipped off about that this individual might be being propped up by uh, China and that he should possibly be reconsidered as a candidate. Uh, The Trudeau government at that time or the Trudeau team at that time did not respond, ran the candidate anyway. He is now a sitting member of parliament. This is being questioned and Justin Trudeau is saying, hey, listen, if you question this, you're a racist, or if you quite, is this an issue where there's a little bit of gaslighting going and where the issue really isn't the issue, that the issue isn't whether or not this member of parliament is a great guy, the issue is that a rule was possibly broken and this needs to be looked at. Could you respond to that? Well, it is uh, continually disappointing and more so all the time, any t- or almost any time someone disagrees with the prime minister on something, he simply... Uh, slouches right away to the racist slur. And it's it's so discouraging. Because racism, by the way, is a problem. But when every issue is uh, branded, oh, you must be racist. I mean, people are now saying, you know, it's racist if you have a standardized test. It's racist if you expect people to be at work on time. One university is leading the charge on um, in the U.S. in terms of punctuality is a racist concept. And the Prime Minister has really picked up on this, and he knows it's a very, that that is a loaded, it's a terrible charge to be hit with. And when that happens, I mean, I, you might have seen recently there was a publication, it's a, in a court document, where Warren Kinsella said, he admitted, this is in court documents, there's no question that he said this, that he, in terms of being hired by the Liberals, to go after certain candidates, and they named the candidates. He talked talk about Preston Manning, he talked about me, um, he talked about our, our former um, prime minister. Um, and uh, he said about the three of us, he said, I bra- he was bragging, I branded them as racist. And he said, even though they're not, they are not racist, but I branded them as that, and I was successful. So on this issue of the candidate, one of his candidates, with some legit, there's some legitimate concerns being raised. He happens to be uh, Asian Canadian. So Prime Minister immediately does his fallback position, tried and true, and mainstream media will usually back him or not confront him on it, just says, oh, you got to be racist. Definitely there were concerns uh, about how the um, uh, Chinese government in his constituency during the election had things done underhandedly by Chinese operatives to affect the vote there. Uh, it's really getting, it's unnerving, and frankly, it's tiring that he just drops to the racist slur charge any time uh, he gets in trouble. Justin Trudeau just says, you must be racist. And that's really obnoxious. And it needs to be stated that rules are rules. No matter what your gender, skin color, orientation in life, 
rules are rules. And, you know, we've seen in the past where conservatives have actually gone to jail, Dean Del Mastro, for uh, breaching Elections Canada rules. And so uh, this really needs to just kind of be about that. Wouldn't you agree? Of course. Uh, rules should be colorblind. There's no question about that. Yeah, well, it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out, and hopefully this will stay out of the partisan bantership domain, and we'll be actually able to get to the heart of the issue and see our democratic institutions strengthened. So uh, earlier in the interview, Stock, you edged into the whole um, conversation about China imposing its culture. Now, in China, the infrastructure digitally has become so advanced that they are able to completely uh, surveillance their uh, citizens in some parts of the nation and give them social credits, demerits, shut down their bank accounts, automatically charge them for a pedestrian a ticket, that type of thing. Um, and now we have a prime minister that's saying, number one, he said that he admires China in their ability to control their citizens. And he's also pushing towards this digital infrastructure of our society. Could you comment on that, Stockwell? And again, I'd just like to ask the question, is this something Canadians should be concerned about? Well, it is. And it's one of those things that can be, you know, challenging to quantify. There's no question that China is uh, I, the world leader um, in terms of imposing what they call this uh, social credit system on their citizens. Uh, they track everything. So their capabilities are huge, but also monitoring speech, monitoring thought. And if it doesn't line up, with the government list of, of uh, their, their credit list. It's like a credit rating, but it's measuring your social credibility. And you can be, in China, you can be instantly out of work, you can be uh, arrested, you can be uh, held for re-education. And we all say, well, that's so terrible. In a way, we have these unspoken and sometimes spoken lists, even in Canada, if it's on record that you spoke out against a strong government narrative, that's going to be on a record. That's going to show up. And um, we should be, you know, obviously concerned about what China's doing and that they, they've introduced this massively into their own uh, country systems. But it's here in similar forms in Canada. One last question on this, the, the issue of China. You know, some reports have said that they believe that China propped up the Liberals, possibly, uh, because they preferred a Liberal minority government. Why would that be in your assessment? Well, it comes down to, first of all, a, a deep philosophical reflex. Um, Marxism and now neo-Marxism, which is, you know, very prevalent and, and probably the prevailing, one of the prevailing forces in our culture today, insists upon the fact of central control, whether it be central control of an economy, whether it be central control of uh, academic institutions, political discourse, it insists on that because it goes to a belief that uh, all the fount of all wisdom and knowledge can be found within a few very powerful, very smart uh, people. And then with that being backed by a force, usually a police force, and always, always for, quote, the good of the community, the good of society. So it starts with that. There's, there is a, the, the more to the left you are philosophically, the more you abide in that kind of thinking. Uh, Pierre Trudeau, you know, dreamt about the day when we would actually be ruled uh, by philosopher kings. Democracy was a nice notion, and uh, you know, should, there, there should be um, some acknowledgement to that. But really, a few really smart people should control everything is, is where that comes from. Whereas conservative thought, small c conservative thought, and not aligning it to a party, uh, very much talks about smaller institutions, the importance of the individual, um, how an economy can flourish if there's a free flow of ideas in the marketplace. Conservative government will challenge the world domination that China is trying to have. They'll challenge it by raising it, and they don't like that. They want to be unchallenged. Well, this is all extremely eye-opening, to put it mildly. Wow, Mr. Day, thank you so much for your input. As we land this plane, you're speaking to Canadians literally from coast to coast. Any final words uh, considering all that we've discussed today? Well, <laughs> you know, give me five hours. Um, yeah, I, I think in just in, in light of your last question, what I said, um, 
we're at a place where there are so many strong narratives coming from the government that are increasingly citizens are not allowed to have a different view. Um, you know, finally, we're seeing some traction in terms of, uh, let's say, Pfizer, for instance, as a pharmaceutical company, uh, finally admitting that a lot of their testing that's been done recently was not done correctly. They're actually admitting that. And yet um, governments are not allowing the other views to be expressed. They're not even allowing these types of news items to be expressed. The fact that we have laws put in by the liberals that do not allow parents to give wise and loving counsel to their 13-year-olds on the issue of that maybe you don't want to have, um, you know, go in for surgery. Clergy are not allowed to say that. Clinicians are not allowed to say that. The, the, there's so many areas that you're not even allowed to raise a question. And that, to me, is a sign that individual Canadians we need to be raising the question. Anytime a government or any power thinks that they have succeeded in stifling by using fear, fear of cancellation, um, the response of citizens and the response of different points of view, anytime a government senses that, and this liberal government senses that, anytime that happens in a society, we be, we're becoming more China-like all the time. So it's great to point to China, but let's remember when we're pointing at them, We've got some fingers pointing back at ourselves. Powerful words. And, you know, true change begins with awareness, of course. And so you have brought so much awareness to our viewers today. I want to encourage everybody to consider watching the show again, sharing it with your friends. And, you know, let's continue to be a voice on these and any and every other issue that, that you care about. Thank you so much, Mr. Day, for joining me today. Thanks for being with you. Great to see you. Well, thank you for joining me for today's show. These are indeed critical and very eye-opening conversations. As we ponder, let's also remember to keep our leaders in prayer as they navigate it all and seek to find solutions to strengthen Canada's security and democracy. As already mentioned, if you appreciated today's program and want to share it, uh, you can easily do that by going to fateen.tv. You'll find this show there as well as other previous episodes. If you want to ensure that you never miss a program, there are a few ways that you can do that. You can subscribe to us on YouTube, you can follow me on Facebook, you can download our free smartphone app, or you can simply go to our website, fateen.tv, and sign up for our email list. When you do that, you will be notified whenever a new show is posted so you never miss an episode. If you appreciate our broadcast, we would sure appreciate you considering standing with us by donating. As a nonprofit TV show, we are able to do these types of interviews because of the generous gifts of our monthly partners and our regular donors. You're the ones that make all of this happen. So if you would like to become a monthly partner or give a special donation today, we would be so grateful. Every amount makes a huge difference. Simply go to fateen.tv to give securely online or call our team at one 866 440-844 and someone would be honored to serve you, help you in any way that you need, and even pray for your personal prayer needs. Thanks again for joining me. I hope to see you next week. Until then, take care of yourselves and God bless.